Hello, hello, hello. So today I'm very excited because I've just got my hands on the brand new Love Brewing Boiler, which is version three. Now, I haven't opened it yet, because I've literally just got home. Um, this was only released a couple of days ago, and I've been told of what the alterations and the differences are between version two and version three. Um, and I can't wait. This is a game changer for UK brewers. And I mean, a game changer. It really is. So before we go any further, I think, uh, well, not before we go any further, I think what we need to do now is just open it up and then let's take a look. Oh. So we have our normal IEC 13 amp plug. Yep, nothing else in there. Oh. <clears throat> so looking at it from the outside, uh, comparing it to version one and version two, the tap's the same with a self-locking mechanism, uh, which I really like, and an adjustable tap, which you can then put a uh, hose on there. So that's all identical and it works really, really well. We've got the same looking um, a plastic front and bezel and buttons and screen, although this one does state start, stop, uh, percent power, plus and minus, giving it a bit away about the change. There's a grill here or an air vent, two air vents here, main socket to go in, and then a single on-off power supply. Single, remember? Before in the version one and two, you had to dual, so you can manually switch on uh, or, or operate both or individually the two heating elements. The ordinary lid with a rubber seal already attached to it. And then inside the uh, PU, or I'm not sure if it's PU leather, I'm not actually sure what this is made from, but the leather jacket, which will sit around here, just on top of the tap. a user guide and rubber bungs. Um, a solid rubber bung and one with a hole for an airlock so you can use this to ferment up. Now, <coughs> what do I do? Look inside, because there's already a change in there that I can see. And it's a good change. So in version one and version two, that temperature sensor was quite low to the ground. Whereas this one, as you can see, is quite high up. Now, how that's beneficial is I found a couple of times myself with a Mark I and Mark II boiler that when you use it as a, as a fermenter, sometimes the yeast level could come up to here and be about three or four centimeters high and the temperature sensor was then below the yeast. Whereas here, they've extended it. So it's a lot, lot higher. You can see up against my finger, it's a lot higher. So that means uh, your yeast is less likely to go above it. So this is going to be a lot better for, for uh, brewing. So let's switch it on. Now what it does, it shows you the actual temperature of the water, which is 16. I'll put five liters in here. The set temperature of what we want it to go at and the power, how much power to give. So this has got a built-in SCR. So what we can do is we can then click on the uh, up, down, and it will then change the temperature. So if I'm distilling, I'm going to want that, say, 100 degrees. And then I can press the power if I wanted to change the power. Now, obviously, I'm going to want 100% to do straight off. Now, you can see that because I changed it to 100 degrees, it's changed the text to say boil, because it wants it to bring it to the boil. If you put it to 99 degrees or anything less, I'm told, then it just it shows that. Now. To carry on, press start, and the fans spin up, and it starts to heat. So that 16 will then start going or rising, and I'm told that once it gets to the right temperature, so obviously for this we want, it will be 100 degrees, it will then turn off everything, but then when it changes by one degree, so it gets one degree less, it will then kick in the heater, and it will then carry on. And if you change it to something different, say for example, I want to change it now, so let's stop it. And I want to change that to 99 degrees, keep the power at 100, press start. It will now change it to heat to 99 degrees. 
still power to 100. How this is a game changer is that when you're distilling, when you get to the right sort of temperature, so we're talking potentially around the 82 degrees Celsius, ideally you want to lower your power so that way it's not a heating as quickly so you can keep it in the sweet zone for longer and you're distilling a lot slower, so therefore it's refluxing a lot more. Um, so what that means is as soon as you get to your 82 degrees or whatever temperature you want to, you can press power and then you can say, well, I want this now to run at say 70. And this will then only give 70% of the power to the heating element. And obviously this is a 2.2 kilowatt heating element. <coughs> Excuse me, 2.2 heat, heat watt for the two elements that are in there. But then this can then say change everything. So you no longer, with a T500, uh, you'd then have to buy a uh, SCR power controller or build your own um, and then integrate that into the three pin plug or plug it into the plug. Whereas this, it's built into the boiler. Um, so you never need to change anything. If you are um, just using this for, for uh, fermenting or anything like that, then you can keep this at a 100%. But if you're distilling either pot or reflux, being able to change this power is an absolute godsend. It really is. So there you go. Now the boiler is still a 25 litre boiler. You've got five litre increment marks on the inside so you can see what levels they are. You've got the same handles, the rubber grips, You've got the same lid clasps on here, the same tap. Um, the control panel say looks the same. It's just really well built. The only thing I have noticed is the viewability of the screen is a little bit more reduced. Um, I found that obviously here is fine, but if I come right over here, I can't really see the screen. Here is fine, but if I come right round again, I can't really see the screen so well. So there is a bit of a reduced visibility in here. If you've got the, this on the floor, um, you probably might not be able to see it by standing up and you might have to crouch down a bit. Um, that's something I'm going to be letting them know of my own personal thoughts of that. Um, but uh, really, see, that doesn't really worry me too much because it's more the functionality of having an SCR. That for me overrules pretty much anything else because it's just going to save so much time. It really is. So I highly recommend this. Um, what a great boiler. And it really is going to change the world for people because uh, you can just do so much more with it. So there you go. Well, I hope you found this informational. And um, if you buy one yourself, let me know in the comments below what you think of the boiler. Uh, I'd love to hear. Okay. You take care. Bye.